Y'all ready? Uh, yes, indeed. All right. You got a church key? Uh, you you do. Oh. You have the way. church key. There you go. Right. Then you pass it this way. And Sam then. 76. Oh, today. yeah. That's and another episode with someone running for office is my friend Rebecca. Glad you could join us. Thank this you for awesome. having me. No, this is tons of fun. Yeah, you'll, you'll have a good time. It's got to be better than... I, I, I watched the forum I was telling you about, and that looks absolutely miserable to do and probably to watch. Some of it was tough to watch. Definitely. Um, it was definitely miserable to sit up there and know that everybody was staring at your face even when it wasn't your turn to talk. So that was fun. <laughs> I only got to speak for five minutes total, but the rest of it was still game face mm-hmm. and yeah. ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. out there just judging you. Yes. <laughs> Lots yeah. of judging. I was thinking about it, especially with you being a lawyer that and doing criminal work, that you get a lot of time to kind of get your point across. And local elections like this just aren't the place to do it. So. No, that's true. Um, when I do closing arguments, I typically get 30 minutes at a minimum, if not an hour for a big case. So I definitely usually have a lot more time to talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, here, there's it's <laughs> virtually... As long as we don't run our batteries down, yeah. we, we can keep going. We'll just keep going. Yeah, we're limited by the batteries and the memory cards. Yeah. That's that's our only limitations. So. And the amount of beer. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even well, that. we'll uh, we'll keep the uh, beer consumption down to maybe about one. Oh, okay. For your sake. Yeah, okay, I, I well, appreciate I that. <laughs> yeah, more than one, and I'll have to I'll have to at least put a pause on it. It's my favorite sailing beer. This is what we discovered on. Uh, Canyon Lake. Yeah, this is a this is a really good, uh, uniquely American lager. You know, most American lagers are based on German lagers. This is one that I think you know we can put our stamp on. Yeah, it as, does as a uniquely American. It has lager. the right. It has all the right yeah. stuff. So I know this this nice lady from the DA's office that I retired from, and you mm-hmm. were already there when I got there, mm-hmm. and you were misdemeanor attorney then, right? I think so. I think I was still in misdemeanors when you I got there. It was there. right at the end of that. And then you went to felony, and um, now you're a first assistant. Is that right? Or trial team trial chief. Team, trial team chief. Yes, and sir. 238? 385th. 385th. Okay, I was in 441. And I only worked, I think, the whole time. I think I did, like, two cases for you. Because, mm-hmm. you know. You were in we're a different just, court different, than me. Yeah, uh-huh. we're totally different courts. So Obviously. I will tell you, uh, when I first got there, um, and, well, no, it was after Laura went in office like right after that she had a big bowling party remember that mm-hmm. so they kind of piled us up by the lanes and it was you and me and one or two other people and i hadn't bowled forever and we're just sitting there having a cold one and rebecca just cleaned up <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm watching this and i'm like she's done this before a lot so i took a bowling class in college not gonna lie perfected my my swing and everything so yeah I can enjoy a good bowling and night. And you never forgot it. Were you, oh, on the, no. were you on a team or did you just Oh, no. Just it was class? just my PE credit at Baylor. We had lots of options like yoga and bowling. So that's what I did. That is pretty I cool. I would do bowling. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, like, it's like the best, the undisputed, it's probably the best law school. I've got two friends who went to Baylor Law and uh, they both graduated in the 90s though when we all graduated from from college. Uh, and they, uh, they uh, never told me that the PE credits were so awesome there. They, yeah. They're amazing. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. And she does did really well at Sporting Clays too. We had a couple of teams. Oh, on nice! Oh, that's true. Yeah. We've got a couple more of those coming up because yeah. we like to do the busting for badges. Yeah, that every was April. Fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, well, first it was just Honda that uh, the dealership here that took on. They they picked me and uh, John and Andrew up when they were at the DA's office, and then and the office actually started a team, and that was a blast. That's mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Well, you guys may be may need a rematch in bowling because Matt's claims to be up in the one nineties now. I, I did, <clears throat> yeah. You've made yeah. that claim or you're actually I, in the I 190s? I actually did it. Well, that's one of those things I kind of – I stuck a pin in for retirement because I can't mm-hmm. do all the hiking and stuff. You know, it's it's all hit or miss with all the treatment. And so uh, my wife and I talked about it. We are watching The Big Lebowski. I'm like, dude, we need oh, to go okay. bowling. So we did, and then we got into it. It was a good couple's date night thing. We went to mm-hmm. the Hipster Bowling Alley place that yeah. has the little horrible – tiny burgers that you pay $30 for and you know just hipster <laughs> you know yeah it, it's a suspenders beard and and fedora kind of place and uh we we had fun and then we started we got into it and uh and yada 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 oh and and also 
He drug us into yeah, it. Yeah, they all came out. And yeah. so we're in this competition and basically all of us are only learning this through YouTube. So that's part of the <laughs> part of the challenge is to, you know, who can who can My dad gave me all of his bowling stuff from the seventies. If that oh, wow. oh yeah, he's rocking it like super I'm fly rocking out it. there. I'm, yes, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Big t- super fly TNT all the way. And I'm bowling in the one sixties now. So yeah. we're bowling yeah. enough that I'm in the one sixties. So hey, well I only I'm only terrible when all of you guys are there. It's just me and Nicole and, and she <laughs> oh. set almost her personal record and then I one ninety one was mine. Mm-hmm. No, anyway. I'm sure you're much better when they're not okay. watching. Okay. Af- oh, yeah. After mm-hmm. the primaries bowling night. Yes. Done deal. Rematch. I want to bring up Thank you for saying primaries. Prime, I said primaries for a reason. Thank you. Go with it. Yeah. Uh, Cliff pointed it out after Tom, uh, Tom Hayne came on. And then we talked with Mary earlier and that was, that was not out as, as of the recording of this, but, uh, Midland County, your elections are going to be decided in the primaries for the most part, because everybody's running on a Republican ticket. And so don't just look for the election date look for the day of the primaries, which is March 3rd, right? Absolutely. And in in typical Midland fashion, March 3rd will be the end of these races. Um, Early voting starts February 18th, which is two weeks from tomorrow. March 3rd is four weeks from tomorrow. And then you won't have to look at our signs anymore. (laughs) It'll be over. (laughs) it's 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 a weird election for me because this is the first one after leaving that system for 28 years. And I'm friends with a lot of people that are running. Mm Mm-hmm. And a lot of people that I have shared a lot of experiences with, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn anybody away. You know, it, it's just, if you want to put a sign in, you want to come on the podcast, bring it on first come, You got the best sign spot too. You were I the first did. one. Yeah. <laughs> I learned how and, to drive T post putting that sign. Oh in, yeah. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah. so uh, it, it's been weird for me because it's a strange political climate in Midland right now. There's so much going on, but it's it's uh, it's cool to support friends and like we'd said, Midland is it's local elections hard to hear your voice. You know, it really get your time out. So, uh, kind of give us a rundown on what brought you to where you are. Like so, Baylor. Yes, um, grew up in Midland. Uh, been so I've been here for thirty years. I uh, went to Trinity while I was here, you know, went to all the classics, went to First Baptist Church, all that jazz, uh, left, uh, graduated high school at 15 and wow. waited till I was 16 to go to college because I needed to be able to drive a car. <laughs> um, <laughs> that helps. It helps. Yeah. Um, went to Baylor. So drove all the way to Waco every other weekend um, or drove home every other weekend. Uh, went to Baylor, graduated in three years. So I was determined to go to law school. I think I decided at the age of 12 that I was going to be a lawyer, and it had nothing to do with Legally Blonde coming out right around that time. Oh, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she had a fancy Without. laptop. I mean, that <laughs> computer just sold me on what being a lawyer was going to be. That's yeah, yeah, that would do it for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't the, the I sparkles. Was, I was disappointed in, in my law enforcement careers. I never got to have a mullet like Mel Gibson and Lethal See? Weapon. So Baylor has a reputation, their law school in particular, for being, they only allow in a certain number of people per semester, and -hmm. there's a pretty high washout rate. So in -hmm. your class, how many were there, if you remember, and how many people washed out? I think there were, I'm going to say 82, but it may have been give or take a few. There were low 80s when we first started our first class, and we graduated with 53, 54. I mean, so, I mean, to our benefit, it's such a small class that you feel like a family because there's only 50 of you and you get to know each other really well. And yeah, the mm -hmm. two two guys who I was talking about, who are my age, who went to Baylor, they, they became friends at Baylor and have been best friends ever since. There's something Mm -hmm. about the, how hard that school is and, Mm -hmm. and the smallness of it, that it forges lifelong friendships. It really does. And what's special about Baylor or not so special is the practice court system. So when we get to the third year of law school, most people, yeah, Yeah. you know what I'm talking about. I've heard lots of stories. (laughs) Most people, the third year of law school is the senior, you know, round trip. It's the blow off year. You went through the first year that was hard. The second year was kind of hard. And then third year was just enjoy your life before you're a real adult that has to do things. But in Baylor, the first year's hard. The second year's okay. And then the third year's practice court. And practice court is literal mock trials 
every single day. You go to class from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then you have mock practice exercises um, for for two quarters because we're on the quarter system. Mm -hmm. Um, So you walk out of that school knowing what to do in a courtroom. And that's the benefit. By the time I graduated, I had done mock trials and mock four dyers and mock opening statements. And I walked in as a misdemeanor practicing on a bar card, didn't even have a license yet, and did like two DWI trials in a week because I knew what to do because I came out of practice court. So... Wow. Mm-hmm. So it's intense, but it but is worth its reputation. I have heard, I've heard that exact same thing from so many people who've graduated. This is the first Bay time Bay. I've ever heard it. Best, even hanging out with them. Arguably at the, the office, best so. law school in the United States. I'm going to go with sure. that. Yeah. Definitely yeah. the best law school no, in the United definitely. States. Definitely. I mean, it's. I'm not biased. I, I do know uh, three or four lawyers from Baylor, not all at the DA's office, but that I've encountered. Oh, one was in the Coast Guard, was a JAG. And uh, they're all squared away. That's just one of those things you just, you know kind of what you're getting. Um, so like I said, we did say, you know, DA's office. How, how many years total? Been there eight and a half years now. Okay. Mm-hmm. And obviously all criminal stuff. And all you're criminal. running for county attorney. Yes, sir. So... <clears throat> I, I'm not clear exactly on what the county we, attorney before, does. Before you got here, we were having this conversation like what we know what the DA d- does. Mm-hmm. The district attorney's job is very easy to pin down. I what think, what mm-hmm. does the county attorney do? We couldn't come up with a solid <laughs> like job description. Well, I'd seen a couple. I mean, I've, I'd had a couple of experiences with them, but not, you know, yeah. not enough in to general. Form a, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know what they used to like. They did used to do some criminal work, right? In Midland. And they did. And every county's built differently. There are lots of counties where the county attorney does do the misdemeanors and the district attorney does the felonies, like even over in Nectar County. That's oh, okay. how they have it split up. And it was done that way in Midland for up until, I mean, I want to say like 25 or 30 years ago. So it was done that way at one point, but hasn't been any time recently. Okay. So, so now county attorney doesn't do any of the misdemeanor prosecutions. That's all done in the district attorney's office. Um, primarily, county attorney is legal counsel for Midland County. Mm-hmm. So they give advice and give, give legal representation to the county, to any elected officials that need advice or representation, any county employee. Um, even just needing advice on what we can and can't do as a county would fall under that umbrella. Um, so county commissioners, county judge. Okay. A bit of a vanguard. Mm-hmm. You're 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 there to make sure everything uh, is done by the letter of the law, mm-hmm. essentially. So okay. what I'm hearing is kind of like uh, in-house counsel at a big company. Yes, in-house like counsel that. for Midland County. Yeah. Okay. And then there are there are a couple of situations where it overlaps a little with what I do in the district attorney's office. Um, one of those is they handle all CPS cases. So having been in the DA's office for eight years now and being a trial team chief, as you know, all I handle are the bigger felonies. Right. Do a lot of child sexual assault, a lot of injury to a child, stuff like that. Anything that has a child involved almost necessarily has a CPS right. case involved as well. County attorney handles the CPS civil side of it while we're handling the criminal prosecution side of it. Um, and then another way that they overlap is that they handle mental health civil commitments. Mm-hmm. So as you know, um, if we have someone who's not competent to stay in trial, we can do some stuff in our jurisdiction to try and make them competent. We can send them off to a hospital, get them on the right medication. Uh, maybe they become competent to stay in trial. But if they have such a mental illness that they can never stay in trial and will never be able to stay in trial, then it is supposed to get turned over to the county attorney's office to pursue that mental health civil commitment aspect of it um, to make sure that they don't just get released on the streets knowing that they're not competent to even know right right from wrong. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. We, uh, I remember 90, 92, 93. This is back when the state prisons weren't taking hardly anyone and they were severely backlogged Mm -hmm. and the jails were running at about twice capacity Mm -hmm. everywhere we could. If if you could fit two inmates in there, they put three or four when it created and there was nothing the sheriff's office could do about it. They just, all these people were sentenced to prison and they just didn't have anywhere to go. Prison wasn't taking them. And you can imagine the climate in the jail, you know, it was hot and it was just, it was violent and it was just miserable for everybody. It was noisy. It was, it was rough. But um, a guy uh, in the jail, one of the notorious jailhouse lawyers, ordered a <laughs> box of the 1983 lawsuits. Mm-hmm. And it's a fill-in-the-blank civil rights lawsuit. 
that says this cop abused me or did whatever. I have headaches. I want $10 million. And, you know, it's, it's literally a fill in the blank. I used to show that when I taught at the academy just to terrify people on how easy it is. It's not like mm-hmm. if you or I wanted to sue a neighbor or something like that. And like, you know, if Lacey wants to sue me for because Macy just pooped in her yard, she would have to spend money, you know, filing mm-hmm. fees and all. And this was just free. So we there was just a deluge of these cases, frivolous cases. And they were trying to make noise to get us, the county, to just let them go to prison. But I remember there were so many of those lawsuits they had to hire. The county attorney was our primary, and then they had to hire counsel to help. Mm-hmm. And how many lawyers are at the county attorney's office? Uh, so right now, there's just the county attorney and then two assistant county attorneys. Okay. There's actually a budget to hire a third assistant county attorney that hasn't been filled for as long as I can remember, but right now it's just the three okay. of them. So do they still hire out a lot, like different attorneys? Um, they do. Actually, that's something I brought up at the forum however many weeks ago now. I can't remember. Um, one of the things that I want to do, if I'm lucky enough to be able to be the county attorney, is stop outsourcing so much because there is a terribly large amount of outsourcing that's happening at the moment. Um, I went just out of curiosity to go pull the records to figure out exactly how much had been going on. And between 2017 and 2019, we outsourced $214,000 worth of legal fees to a law firm out of Austin. Um, So I, I just feel like taxpayer money with, with a position with a budget for a third position that is not filled. Mm Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. Yep. And that and that's just one of that's one of my points is that taxpayer money needs to be more efficiently used. It doesn't need to be wasted. You should not be paying for in house counsel as well as paying for out of house counsel. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Why why would you I mean I can see like in the situation I talked about mm-hmm. we had an issue where there were so many cops being sued, so many jailers and and they sued they even sued the DA, I think. Oh, probably they just you know, anybody they could think of. <laughs> anybody they could think of to write. Yeah, I remember Al Shore having to testify. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and and, uh, and you know it made it all the way through a Spears hearing and and it got done. But uh, they had to simply because just to make the court dates, there was not enough that one lawyer could do. But mm-hmm. what do what do we have to outsource? I you know I'm there's trying been, to picture it. <laughs> <laughs> there's been a couple of different situations that I and that's one reason why I went and looked because just in my eight years. I personally knew about a couple different situations. One was a software system that the sheriff's office wanted to implement. And then there were legal problems and contract problems and mediation problems and all of that because it handles our county government, our, it hand, it, uh, it was called Arconics. I don't know if you remember it. I remember that. (laughs) Matt Matt knows. I was one of the, uh, I was one of the administrators uh, of that system when, you know, of, of Spillman. Before mm-hmm. I left, I gave mm-hmm. Matt a knowing look when you yeah. mentioned that, that, word? I, that Arconics thing. Yeah, I, Did I didn't know chills? a whole lot about. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just remembered. Um, I was already at the DA's office. Obviously, obviously and I was a felony investigator, and it, the faucet of information from the state, from the county, and all when Arconics went on, just shut off like a faucet. That was a mm-hmm. nightmare, and I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Honestly, anything about the contract they had with Spillman at the time because it had been renewed long, long after. But yeah, that was a mess. It was, it was a mess, and that was the problem was that it was our mess because it involved our sheriff's office, and mm. I mean, it involved our office because we were trying to merge systems and data and whatnot. And so it's just something that we were in a better position to handle because we were the ones in the middle of it, and instead, Oof. Lockridge and McGinnis. Mm. So <laughs> okay, wow. I get that. Yeah, I. I have to say, out of everybody that's running for office that has been in here, this is the office I know the least about. So it's kind of cool <laughs> to learn it. I just uh, we I, I, we've asked a few questions of, of civil law and stuff of them, but mm-hmm. that's really I mean we kind of consulted, but that's most of our stuff was criminal. We'd have to call the DA or, or right you know, something exactly. Like that. But yeah, so what is I, and I'm always amazed at this. Uh, how busy you guys are in campaigning. I've said this with everybody, especially Brandon. 
Oh yeah, Brandon, that oh. dude. Yeah, Brandon's killing himself. He, yeah. That is some imagine. smash mouth campaigning he's doing. Yeah, man. I don't think he's sleeping at all. Well, and the, the, yeah, <laughs> I know I'm not, so I yeah. can't imagine what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, it's, how's that going with your job? And like I said, you're you you're in a trial right now. You have a trial going, or did it finish? I um I'm in the middle of a trial. It's so today is I don't know when you'll post this, but today's Monday. Um, so I did a trial today that's continuing till tomorrow, and when I finish that one, I'll start another one on Wednesday. Wow. Um, so doing assault family. Violence, violence now I'll be doing a stalking on Wednesday um, and I'm and I'm in one of the busier courts I mean to be fair of the of the courts yeah. that are in in Midland County but it's a lot you know there's there's something thankful to be said for the fact that it will be over in four weeks because due to the nature of Midland's politics and it being over in the primaries it's fast and furious and yeah. then it's over yeah um, it's it's busy while it lasts having a full-time job having the full-time job of campaigning and then having the almost one-year-old uh at home that has to go to daycare and like needs to eat and things uh-huh. um <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's we, busy, uh, but we we typically um he was born february 19th 16th 16th mm-hmm. my dyslexia guy be all right i do I, I read through your website before uh, mm-hmm. yeah we always facebook stalk people I, I didn't i mean i already knew everything about did you like the website was it good i thought it was pretty good. Okay, as, good as a guy who does multimedia i have no negative critiques well thank so. you that's yeah. rare from him well it, good it, it i feel really special is to yeah. get that out of him so yeah you know us artist types we're oh i know you know how many artists it takes to change a light bulb right it takes five it takes one to change the light bulb and the other four to stand around and talk about how they could have done it better yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the truth i like it, it is. yeah I, and i totally forgot what i was about to ask see Saw chicken. I'm sorry. And I did. I did and, that to you, man. It's my oh fault. no. It's it's. I still like, like I said. I'm. We were talking about how busy we are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I was going to comment that uh, I think we, did we feed you for the first time today when you when yes, you got you, here? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> so um, we put out snacks, and she's like, "I haven't seen food all day." <laughs> it was delicious food, so thank you. You're very welcome. I worked very hard buying that brisket from H E B. You did a good so, job. It's pretty good. <laughs> did a good job yeah. heating it up. I tell you, one thing we did at the DA's office was eat well. Oh, so, we eat all the time. Yeah, I miss the parties over there. I miss the mm-hmm. birthday and all. Every time Ronnie cooks a brisket or something like that. Nice. There's always that day in November where food appears on the break room table, and you just know there will be food there every day yeah. for the next two months. It's like the beginning of the holiday season hits, and you just know that you're not going to be hungry <laughs> until January. Yep. You're going to be good. Or nice. if... Uh, uh, a couple of our lawyers, uh, Susie or Bonita, show up with their big Tupperware because <gasps> they're both really things. into baking. And oh they're awesome. yeah! Oh, they're so good. And Bonita's yeah. literally won awards at the state fair. Yeah, like she is. She has. a prize baker. And yeah. she feeds all of her failures to us. We always tell her, "You got anything to cast upon the swine?" You know, all the investigators. <laughs> my my wife retired from the state in October, and I know that her co-workers. That's one of the main things they miss is all the baking yeah. and sweets. That mm-hmm. she's a bit of a baker herself. And uh, so, yeah, I know that they miss that mm-hmm. more than anything or as much as anything, anything about else? her being gone is all the good stuff they don't get to eat anymore. Oh, oh Bonita yeah. will tell you, be the first to tell you that we only invite her to game night because then she feeds us. I ate some really delicious chili last night because she came over for the Super Bowl. So <laughs> right on. <laughs> because I don't watch football, but I eat Bonita's chili. I, yeah, I don't, I don't. I'm not a football <laughs> guy. Either. And I've, I've got it's one of my things of uh, being retired and working out of the house now is uh, I cook a lot. Mm-hmm. And so I'm I'm starting to really get a a grip on some of that. Good. And, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty good I'm a pretty good house husband. Uh, I've learned. Uh, <laughs> like I said I cook. He's a kept man now. Yeah, I fixed the <laughs> air conditioner. Uh, you know, do I do all that stuff? I've saved a ton of money, plumbers and air conditioning. So I can do all that stuff. And I'm also learning uh, shiatsu massage. So Ooh. yeah. It's sold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My wife loves to come home, you know. Uh huh. You're cooking, so, you're massaging, like I don't know what dog, else to tell you to do. Yeah. I groom the dog and, and all that. So and uh I get most of my work done by noon. Anything oh. I got going on. So Ugh, that's rough cool. life. Are wow. you uh how did you decide this was your, your thing? Because, I mean, you're doing so well and you're in such a good spot yeah. at the DA's office. I, I know when I went from the sheriff's office to the DA's office, that was that was a lot of of uh uh, I agonized over that for a long time, and then what's your uh, yeah? What's your yeah. drive? What's your passion behind doing this? Why do you want this office? My passion is this town. I'm from here. I grew up here. I want the best for Midland. I mean, I out of all the places I could have gone after law school, came back here, dragged my husband from Austin 
to Midland to raise our family here because I think that Midland is an amazing town and an amazing place to be from. And so I can't stand by and watch it be mistreated. I want what's best for it. I want to do a good job for it. Um, So having been in county government and been in the courthouse for eight years now, I can see what needs to be fixed. And I want to put in the time. I want to put in the hours to do the fixing. That's just, that's my personality is I want to make things better for my town. Oh yeah. You've kicked back some of my work before. I know. (laughs) I know that. With the best intentions. (laughs) No, it it was. No, firm but fair. Gotta do what you gotta do, man. Yeah, I I do. I I came in, I was really stressing out over a case and I said, hey, you got a minute. She says, yeah, sit down. I don't know if you remember this. And I whined for 30 minutes about all the weirdness of this case that was going on. I don't even, I can't even remember what it was. Just, I remember this web of witnesses and all this, mm-hmm. now this one's lying and now this one's telling the truth and I blah, blah, blah. What do you want to do? And, and, and she looked at me just perfectly poised and professional and she goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. This is not my case. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at my notes again. Oh, oh damn it. The office next door. <laughs> Nice talk. Enjoyed it. Went but on. hey, I heard you out. <laughs> you I did. Help yeah, him you in heard the end, the, but. You had this, this, this to, the total, you know, the, the, the receptive listener just ready to catch that football. And, and, and then, like, uh, yeah, it's, I it was nothing. Do, I do awesome. remember that. I commend you for that because I will shut him down way sooner yeah. <laughs> than 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's that's true. We'll be dude, like, dude you, I've heard the story. You gotta or, calm down, yeah, or man. Just chill out, or sit down, or yeah, <laughs> go walk around the block. But, Take a breather. Yeah, how th- this seems like a very unusual just election climate right now mm-hmm. because we have a lot of big names that have been around for a long time. Your opponent, uh, Russell Mom. Uh, we have the entire history and legacy of Gary Painter. Mm-hmm. And like we just talked, we talked to Mary uh, before the episode before this one and Judge Gillis and all. And that no one that I know of has, it's hard to say that things need to be changed behind figures like this that have been icons, mm-hmm. but still in government, it just needs a fresh eye after. We, After a while, I we think. seem to have always had this air of not running against incumbents. It just seems like since I got here, it was always just this understood implicit agreement that if there was someone in the office that wasn't ready to leave, you just stood back and yeah. held your tongue and waited your turn. Um, but I just think that if the job's not being done correctly, then why wait? That's uh, and that's a, a kind of a I hate the buzzword, but especially in business and government, but, but the culture. When I came to the DA's office, one of my first jobs was to walk an an attorney out that just got canned. (laughs) Right? Welcome to the DA's office. Yeah. And and, and I I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, It was a dude that just didn't, he just didn't cut it. And they're like, hey, you know, because there's a joke. You keep that up, and there'll be an investigator with a cart outside your office because yes. that's how because that's we, how you know when we it's roll over. the cart out and pour yeah. your crap on Put it. Put all you know? your stuff on it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and sometimes KG would just walk by with the cart and stop by your office for a second too long. Just I did to that too. Hey, hey. <laughs> like I this. did that to Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, I know it was horrible. Oh, that's mean. I did that to Elizabeth. She's she's, she's an so angel. Sweet. <laughs> but, well, she she had it coming in this case. I mean, she she's you know she's ninety percent angel. And I, I rolled that card in and, and I walked by, I felt bad because she was sitting there clutching her blanket. It's always over her chair because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'd startled her so bad. But uh, oh. my point is uh, the DA's office was kind of a, a, kind of a culture shock for me because they would actually, both Teresa, uh, Laura's predecessor and Laura, if you weren't a fit, if it wasn't working, if you weren't, if you weren't carrying the load, you're gone. Mm-hmm. And that was not what happened in, in other areas of county government, federal government, any government, mm-hmm. is that you pretty much have to do something criminal to get canned. And I, I'm kind of with you. I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing, especially when it comes to elected officials, because it's, it's like I just told Mary, I left my position as an investigator at the sheriff's office as a sergeant, mm-hmm. very proud of the work I had done because I've, Ever since uh, I was a teenager in Civil Air Patrol and all, I was geared. They build us to be leaders, to, to lead people and accomplish things. And then I was a SWAT team commander. And I'm very proud of the job I did in that. And my buddies and coworkers that were around me all 
were supportive of me and said I did a good job. But even when I left, I turned around and I could see holes mm-hmm. from things that I just didn't care about or didn't pay attention to that could be big things, could be small things. Mm-hmm. And so I can tell people there's a reason there's kind of a four year season to military positions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's a reason to not stick around in something for, yeah, for too long. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I think you're exactly right. Cause I remember when anybody would run against Sheriff, uh, Sheriff Painter, especially if they worked there, mm-hmm. it was like an act of treason. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> I mean, it was, yeah, we had a couple guys do it and it was, it was suicide. It was not, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and they it left immediately after, but it's, yeah, it's kind of one of those things. And, well, and one thing you said that I want to comment on about it being a good fit is that the result of that is that we're a family. You know, there there are 20, oh, I'm going to say like 22, 23, 24 attorneys yeah. in my office. But, and then of course, all the support staff that do all the, all the good work for us. But we're a family because we are a good fit. And I... I guess what I want to say is that I'm not doing this because I don't like my job. You know, this is right. a win-win for me. If I don't win this election, I love what I do. I, mm-hmm. I really enjoy doing criminal prosecutions and being able to help the citizens of Midland from that perspective. I would love to be able to help the citizens of Midland from this new perspective. That's but cool. this isn't just me trying to escape a bad position. We're, we're a great office. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was, a, it was a good place to work. and I, I miss it. I do mm-hmm. miss it. Um, I, the worst part of it for me was as a cop coming from SWAT mm-hmm. and all that really cool door kicking stuff oh. to being, you know, essentially working in a large law firm was kind of serving kind of our weird. subpoenas for yeah, us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's cool. It's like no, no one even, even raised their voice at me. Like people don't mm-hmm. mess with the DA's office and, you know, occasionally people complain about a subpoena or something, but I'm like, i went seven years and nobody took a swing at me or shot at me or anything Mm. like before. But (laughs) I do think there is in not necessarily, well, pretty much all government in ours that, uh, in, in the County that if you're the, the whole thing, first of all, being promoted to your level of incompetence is kind of a thing a lot of times, or especially in government, if you're good there, stay there forever. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, it was like that when I was at the sheriff's office. If you want to do something else, no, this is where you you belong. You stay. You don't you know jump from one division to the other. You don't you don't go from one department to the other because you're a traitor or or they assume it's just because you've made an enemy or whatever. It's not like that. It's kind of a different world now. I think right. I mean, is that I would is say it a little so. more accepted? I mean, it, it seems like it's like that in business too, that people are moving around more. You, people don't go to the same place and work there for 60 years and get their gold watch and croak. It's true. It's, move it's, around. it's about the movers and the shakers. It's about the fresh perspectives, the new ideas, the uh, being, I mean, being useful in just more than one capacity instead of, like you mm-hmm. said, being really good at what I do. So therefore staying there for 60 years, right. because at some point you you're not good at what you do anymore, but how do you draw that line? You know, 32 years down the road, suddenly 23 years down the road, suddenly have to draw that line instead of moving upward and onward um, to bigger and better things. There, there's a a radio talk show. She's a therapist or psychiatrist or whatever, uh, Dr. Laura Schlesing. And she has a really cool saying that whatever you're doing, um, you have to stop and think between now and dead Is this what you want? Is this what you want to be doing? And it can be a positive thing or a negative thing. Like you can love your job right now. Is this what I want to do forever? Mm -hmm. And that's just it. It's like I looked at my job at the sheriff's office and I'm like, well, no, there's nowhere to go above me. And this isn't what I want to do forever. I can't do this. You can't be on SWAT forever. You can't, you know, it's it's physically, emotionally, everything taxing. It's taxing on your family. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you live by that. 3 a.m. phone call and all that stuff. And uh, it's like that with everything you do. So I, I, I really see what you're doing here. That that makes a big, uh, th- that's uh, admirable that you could you could say that. that this isn't what I want to do forever. I want to move on to the next thing. And Well, and you're at, that, you. you're at the age for that. You know, I mean, you're, you're, I, I, I once, uh, when I graduated from college, one of my mentors, I, I, he was like, what are you going to do? And I said, I, I mean, I have several things I'm interested in. He said, let me give you a piece of advice. Just experiment with your twenties. He said, he said, just do, 
If you see something cool you want to do over here, go do it. If you see something cool over there you want to do, go do it. Just do all the things you want to do and then you'll find your way. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that that's solid, you know, even if you want a public service career, I think it's it makes sense, especially in your late 20s, early 30s, whatever, to to seek these kinds of things Mm -hmm. out, because in the in the process of trying to help your community, you find yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. too. Well, and I think there's some definite truth to that, because I don't think I would have been nearly as wise and introspective to have said that when I graduated law school at 22. I don't think I knew any of that. (laughs) Um, But it's become blatantly obvious over the course of my adult career that this is what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. I I give back to the community in my job. Every single time I go into court and fight for a child or fight for a victim, I'm giving back to my my town. Um, I've been in the junior league for seven years now, and I've gotten to do so many incredible community service opportunities in that position from the food bank to the recording library uh, to I mean even just being executive vice president of junior league and getting to make sure that all the things got done and all the people got helped and the the girls at Goddard junior high and the ladies from Buckner and safe place and getting all of their uh, things done and then currently I'm on the board of the museum of the southwest and I've been the chairman of Christmas at the mansion for two years now and getting to make sure that all those programs run smoothly so that we can support our local arts and our children's museum and everything. It's just, it's become obvious to me that that's where I find my joy. That even if I didn't know that eight and a half years ago, I have definitely figured out that what makes me the happiest is helping other people. And so I strive to do it in just every aspect of what I do. That's cool. Excellent. That's cool. And you strike me as a person, unlike me, that's going to continue to do that. Oh, absolutely. I don't do that anymore. I just, yeah. <laughs> I did. I, I, you got, I couldn't you, do boards. You and got stuff a dog like to groom and yeah. you got meals to cook for meals the wife to cook. And I, I massages got into, to give. yeah, I got into this, this <laughs> mindset. I, I did all the boards and, and stuff like that. And I just couldn't do it anymore. And it was, it's just strange. Um, and it became negative. So I, I had the between now and dead moment mm-hmm. that, that I had to kind of move on. And also, uh, law enforcement is one of those things. If you, if you do it too much, you're going to build yourself into a little house. Mm-hmm. That that's all you do. You know, if you never get out of it, we, as we talked about that with Mary, that having, a an artistic, uh, kind of different side of that. Those are the people that tend to endure mm-hmm. public service and, and things like law enforcement. You need that's the outlets. Better. Yeah. yeah. Emotional, creative outlets. Oh yeah. yeah. Mine has always been music. I have been playing music since I could walk. I've been dancing since I was two and a half, been playing violin since I was three. Um, even when I first moved back here, I don't know if you know this, but I was teaching dance classes when I first started at the DA's office. Cause I went back home to my, uh, dance studio that I grew up going to here at Bingham, um, and became the resident like tap teacher because tap has always been my favorite. I didn't know that. I, yeah. I, I knew you played violin. I don't, I, and you mm-hmm. probably told me I could have forgotten, eh. but that's okay. cool. But yeah, no, yeah. I've, that's always like, but it's the music of it. Even it's not even so much the physical dancing or the violin or the piano or mm-hmm. it's, it's the music outlet. That's always been my creative. We can dig it. Yeah, yeah I'm I, sure you can. I certainly can. I've <laughs> made a good portion of my living over the last 30 years as a musician. So I'm, I feel everything you're saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's something about music at, at, at every level of, for, like you, I, I'm assuming you know, it's a uh, concert violin, concert style, classical type. Typically, yeah. Typically, yeah. Literal concert, like went to play in Carnegie Hall when I was 14. Oh, cool. 13, 14. Mm-hmm. When, when did you start? How old did you start playing? When I was three. Three, okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I can't sight read. Oh, yeah, I definitely can. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't need to. Yeah, I, I don't. You know, and most of the stuff we get Nashville chart and all, and but uh, it's the same kind of, it's the same kind of release. You mm-hmm. put your brain in the same place, and and yeah, it's fantastic. And I, I feel sorry for people who don't. Mm-hmm. And and it's weird. I had a conversation with someone the other day about this, and their day uh and it was and Johnny Capadonna, the artist that was mm-hmm. in here, kind of kind of backed me up that people assume that talent is just something you just have mm-hmm. and you wake up in the morning and you can just do it like singing like some people just have a voice and they can sing and other people like me to do it have to be taught mm-hmm. and 
I learned bass. I had instructors. I taught myself. I played six string guitar. I'll never be a Tim Kreitz, but I'm still a musician. I'm still a solid one. Mm -hmm. I can still get gigs, but I'm not going to play solos like him. Right. I can't do it. My brain doesn't do it. Uh, I learned to read music, just the style I was in. It's not rock and blues and stuff like that, and even jazz. Nobody mainly read national charts. But you don't have to go overboard. All you have to do is do it. You don't want to do it and do it. Well, there's mm-hmm. this thing called the 10,000-hour rule, too. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And uh, I I don't know that I'm terribly naturally talented, but I spent a lot of time. Spent in my, Over 10,000 hours. Yeah, I spent <laughs> a lot of time on the edge of my bed with a guitar in my hand. And, and that's how, you know, I've been very autodidactic my whole life. But um, I was going somewhere with this. Yeah, and I pulled it a mat. Happens. I pulled yeah. a mat. Yeah, dude, I, I'm serious. My brain vacuum from all that treatment. <laughs> so when your name becomes a verb, is that if a good you thing? Get, yeah. Well, if you oh, get I was in the, talking. In the I, well, yeah. I was just talking about the ten thousand hour rule, and 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 dedication to something is is as important as any natural talent you might have. And and where I was going to conclude with that was to, to suggest a book to you, Ooh. Uh, called Outliers. By okay. Malcolm Gladwell, and it's about this very subject um, on the good side and the bad side. It talks about all the things that lead to rousing success with people and how it happens incrementally. And the ten thousand hour rule is a big part of that. Okay. Uh, it talks about everything from the Beatles, how they became mm-hmm. such a good band. It wasn't necessarily because they were terribly talented; it was because mm-hmm. they played in strip clubs in Frankfurt. 20 you know 15 16 hours a day for 10 years before anybody ever noticed Mm -hmm. them and they were just a great band you know Mm -hmm. ten thousand hour rule so anyway it's a really great book it also talks about how things can go wrong as outliers too due to communication breakdowns Mm -hmm. and logistical breakdowns and and that sort of thing so i would you would be the kind of person who would really appreciate that oh i would outliers by malcolm gladwell got it excellent book i will be looking that up when i get home Mm -hmm. yeah it's been so long since i read that uh the one I'm stuck on right now is Loser Think by Scott Adams. Mm-hmm. That is, and he's a persuasion expert. Really? He would really dig that, yeah. And I don't know, uh, we were talking, my wife and I were talking about you, and he said, you mentioned that book, and I thought, his kind of persuasion, I don't know if it's a lawyer kind of persuasion. You'd sort of have to read it, but it's, he's really good, and he's a writer. He's, you know, he's, he's the guy who draws Dilbert. Oh, okay. And uh, he's he's gotten in the political scene. He predicted Donald Trump's win, and he's not a Republican, and so everybody hated on him. And then he podcasts and books. But his 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 what is what's the book called? Again? Loser Think. Loser Think. Loser okay. Think. Right. And it's about uh, well, it's just how to approach problems and persuasion and and things like that. And uh, he hangs on some things I never thought of, and just use of language and and all. And, and it's. It's fascinating to get in that guy's head. He's he's weird, but just to see how that mm-hmm. guy works out a problem is okay. Mm-hmm. I'll have to, it's I'll really have good. To I love out. his podcast too. So, mm-hmm. but uh, where do you play now? Are you are you doing anything like, like you just like she's got a baby? She's got a one year old baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. How do you do? It? I remember I mean, when my kid rarely. was two. Yeah, man, I I barely could because we heard a guitar. He came running. Mm-hmm. I tried to raise him right. I did everything I could, and he turned out to be a drummer. But oh, still, you, you could. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just playing guitar with his kid, trying to chew through the door like a like a puppy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, it's definitely very rare these days. I still have my old piano and my old violin and, and such. Um, I feel like most of my musical outlet these days is just the playlist that I choreograph to listen to on the way home, just go. to make that mental break from work to time to pick the kid up from daycare. Like yeah. that's that's my musical outlet is picking the right the right mood, the right songs. It's so nice to have a musician at this table that still loves music and doesn't hate everything. Yeah, that's a <laughs> challenge. Of course, she's also twenty years younger than us. Too. That's true. Wow. She hasn't had time to get jaded about. I don't anything. think she. I, I don't see. I don't see her getting jaded. Yeah, you ought to hear us, man. It's just it, uh, one of our friends hates to travel with us. Said you guys hate everything, like everything that comes on the radio. You're like, ah, oh, it's crap. <laughs> I could do better. <laughs> Stupid EDM. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let me give me the light bulb. Country isn't the same. <laughs> yes, anymore. I can do it better. Yeah, darn it. Country isn't the same anymore. It's all in my days. Bro, country crap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do have a cool country story. I was reminded of that that you guys will dig as as being musicians. I was in uh, like an academy, like academy here or something. Uh, middle of the day, bought something. Nobody's in the store. 
and I don't think I've told this on the podcast. And this this girl she looks like college age, and she's checking me out, and she's just sort of drony. And I'm in the store, and they're playing that horrible bro country. I think that's what it is. Yeah, it's crap. It's like half '90s hip hop with just some dude with a twang singing it. You know, it's just not. I don't know what it is. It, it did have a country feel, but it was it was hip hop. It's it was, re- it's really bad. Is I that mean, bro country? It's it that is that falls oh, under yeah. the bro country. We're totally taking this thing off the rails. Well, I just yeah. want to tell I just want to tell the story real quick. <laughs> one more story. I just one just one more story. <laughs> but I, and I was just reminded of it. And it's it's cute. But I was listening to this, and uh, this exemplifies how you and I hate everything. You know? <laughs> and uh, and I'm I'm shopping. And I'm like, man, I want to get the hell out of here. This is really annoying. This is I mean, so it's, bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's like listening to a cat fight or something. This is awful. And so I, I find what I need, and this girl's checking me out. And she's this you know, young college girl, and she's just kind of drony. And I said, how do you listen to this all day? And there was just something about her physical appearance, what she was wearing, that she's not a bro country fan. Mm-hmm. She just didn't strike me as that. And she goes, it's all the time. It never stops. I don't know what it is. There's not even any commercials. Get me out of here. It won't go away. <laughs> We've said things about it. Even even like the, the section managers have said it. It's horrible that people are leaving here. We we don't even want to come to work. She's sending but, you Morse code but, with her eyes. Yeah. Yes. She, goes, she said, but you're, <laughs> you're a customer. You spend money here. They might listen to you. I think the manager's here. If you go over there, would you, would you talk to them? Really? This is horrible. So, yeah. <laughs> Matt is often that type of catalyst with people, as uh-huh. I'm sure you know. I yeah, do. Yeah. So I, but I'm, I'm glad that, that it, it brings you something, that there's something that can take you out of all the mess. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be tough to leave the DA's office. Is that going to be... It will be. going to be weird. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. They are they are family. We've I've been there for so long. And even the people that haven't been there as long as I haven't only been there for a couple years, I mean, they're, they're my family. They're the ones that brought me food when I was on maternity leave. And yeah. they're the ones that we go visit in the hospital. I mean... They're my extended family. It'll, yeah. it'll be really hard to leave them. It's a good thing I'll just be upstairs. Yeah. Um, we can still go to lunch. You know, I can just hop down from 11 to 2. And That was uh, that was cool. Uh, when I left the sheriff's office, it's not like you leave it forever. You're mm-hmm. still the people you care about are still Still around. interacting mm-hmm. with the same people. Yeah. Just in a yeah. Way. And the family of the DA's office, especially all of us being on, on the same floor. Mm-hmm. They're just right there and just like within earshot of each other. Oh, yeah. Oh, that within earshot. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was an experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of colorful folks there. A lot of colorful I do, folks. Uh, yeah. I do miss going to work. I, I miss torturing Ronnie most. Oh, I'm sure I he do, misses man. it too. Yeah. He's been in here on the podcast and I just, I think of stuff I could do to him every day, <laughs> like computer stuff and, and all. It's fantastic. Oh, but, you boys. Yeah. So how, are you, how much, uh, I know Brandon's all over the world, but like how much, how much time does it take to run? How do you put all that together? When, when you squeeze it in, what do you have to do? A lot of it is after baby goes to bed. Because frankly, I mean, I work a job from eight to five. Mm-hmm. I My husband is a firefighter paramedic, so he works 48-hour shifts. So when he goes to work, he's out. And I'm a, I'm a single yeah. mom. Yep. Um, so essentially five to seven is baby time because that's what it takes to pick him up from daycare, uh, do dinner time, bath time, bedtime, get him down. Um, so I mean, I when I said I'm not sleeping, I, I mean I'm not sleeping because wow. a lot of my emailing and, and organization and all of that is from 7 p.m. to however long I can keep my eyes open before wow. my alarm goes off at 5 a.m. and I start all over. Oh, so 5 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> is it good for you to wake up at 5 a.m.? I don't, it's I don't not. Know. It is not good for you. <laughs> let me tell you. So I have to ask you this. This is a question I've, I've started asking a lot of people. Is the 5 a.m. thing, does that, are you a morning person or is that discipline? It, it's discipline. It's necessity. It's knowing that if I sleep past 5 a.m., I'm not going to have time to get up and get okay. dressed and pack the daycare bottles before the baby wakes up. And have to, I mean, it's, I'm not a morning, per, I'm a morning person in that I love getting stuff done in the morning, but not at 5 a.m. I don't think anybody's a 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. person, honestly. I, I'm a 9 a.m. person. You know, I'd love yeah, to I'm go out for like a breakfast and That's, go run some errands in the morning. That'd be great. Yeah. And in, in, in Southern California, when they tell you be here first thing in the morning, that means 10 o'clock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I it's mean, like that around Terlingua. Yeah. Places like that. I, I mean, it, kind of a manana kind of a. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. We would tour through those places and you you would walk in and, and start talking to whoever, you know, sound engineering, whatever in there, like 
you're here on time. What's why are you this here? Is weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me tell you about this trip. We went on to Ireland a couple of years ago and they don't do anything before. Yeah. At least like eight thirty or nine. I remember the first time we stayed at, uh, we tried to stay at little Airbnbs in home so that we could actually be in the culture with the people. Um, and she asked what time we wanted to get up for breakfast and we said, Oh, okay. So maybe if we do breakfast at seven, then we can get on the road and start sightseeing and do it. And she just looked at me and was like, we don't do breakfast before nine. So Oof. I meant like nice. between nine and 10, what, but yeah. because that's just, it's the culture. They get up and they enjoy themselves and they have the big Irish breakfast at 9 a.m. And then they move about their day and go mm-hmm. to work. So totally See, different. It, it made sense when I was in the Coast Guard to get up as early as possible and get everything done before noon or one because mm-hmm. by then it was so murderously hot in Corpus Christi, Texas, that all you would do, whatever it was, you would just be wanting to die. It, it was yep. miserable. Mm-hmm. And that makes sense. And then we get... I, I had it out. We we started. Uh, we changed some hours at the sheriff's office once, and there were a bunch of people kind of because it was different. And we had some guys needing to do evening stuff, and we stretched out and changed schedules around. So it, it was just a it was a shock to the system, and it was a cow at a new gate, and they didn't know what to do with it. And I got into this thing about basically we were too lazy to get up early in the morning, and that's when it occurred to me. I'm sitting around with the guys. I was like, we are busting our humps. We got a lot going on. Three man crew. David Kreiner was in it. Nah. And, uh, you know, it's these guys are saying that because it's easy for them to wake up. Mm-hmm. These guys, their feet hit the floor at four o'clock in the morning, no matter what they do. Because I've traveled with them and they're in bed by seven. <laughs> you know, that's just how they how they operate. And I'm like, I can't. Dude, me and this guy, he sets an alarm when he travels. Sets an alarm for like six in the morning. Hey, man, if we had got to be at the next show, it, here's the thing. I, I'm naturally ahead, an artist and a musician. We're, again, we're off the rails in this podcast. No, we're talking <laughs> we're about talking discipline. To, okay, we're, we're relating this to her level okay. of discipline. Okay. Bring me back to that. Okay. Yeah. After this. I give you, I'll give you that. Yeah, that's the whole thing is that it, you you want to sleep in. You, you played until 2 a.m. and you're torn down. And you got to be at the next show the next day. But if you dawdle that's when bad things can happen on the road that's that's true so it's better for me to you get you get four hours of sleep or three hours of sleep and then you get up in the morning and you get moving and you get to the next place you get set up you get your sound check done and then you can sleep for the rest of the afternoon take a nap because you made it without a flat tire or a breakdown or some you see what i'm saying Mm -hmm. this is all till noon and sure enough then you'd have a flat tire then you'd have a mm -hmm. people don't understand how much work being a professional musician is and how much organ organization you have to have to be successful at it Mm -hmm. you can't get drunk the night before and sleep until noon and then you gotta just wake up and expect it to be this is that up at the upper echelons of music dumb if -hmm. that's a word i just made that up it probably i like it i hope it's a word that's hot (laughs) that's where you get to do that you Mm -hmm. know and then you get to get on your jet and you fly to the show and show a couple hours carry you to your jet exactly oh yeah but if you're trying to if you're trying to make a decent living as a musician and you're on the road you have to be very disciplined about that so i totally get where you're coming yeah i and i i brought that whole thing up because that means a lot when you're not a morning person and you kill it like that every morning every morning well in you know, to toot my own horn, if I have anything, it's discipline. Well, and so what I'm, what I mean to say is, so I actually went to Trinity through sixth grade. And after that, I started homeschooling um, because it just became obvious that that was the better situation Mm -hmm. for me as a student was to homeschool. So you talk about getting up and getting everything done before noon. That was my daily philosophy was if I get up when my siblings go to actual school and they leave for school at, you know, 730 or eight, if I get up when they get up and I get everything done by lunchtime, then after lunchtime, I can do whatever I want until they come home from school. And so I was home with my mom and I learned how to sew and cross stitch and cook and picked up so many new hobbies because that was my philosophy was why waste time not getting stuff done. And then lo and behold, uh, started homeschooling at seventh grade and did seventh and eighth grade in one year and then did high school in like two and a half or three years because I just, I was a person that believed in getting it done. It just didn't seem like it was worth wasting the time. 
that's part of the beauty of homeschooling. As it well. was. Yeah. It's one it was of the reasons I'm a me. huge believer. The yeah. government is not lucky. Right. I agree with that. It's not right for every kid, mm-hmm. but when you find a kid that it's right for, it the works kid really can well. really thrive. I'd mm-hmm. say the, the the government is lucky to have that attitude. In you <laughs> well, because, thank you. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Like I said, it typically takes a lot more force to get people to do that, you know, mm-hmm. to show it. Because I'm, I'm not a morning person. I I have a legitimate to sleep shift phase. I've got a long circadian rhythm. And it, for me to do 5 a.m. every day is miserable. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, it's 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 bad. And it took, uh, I mean, it took the Coast Guard to get me to where I could. Because I will actually start, I'll sleep through alarms and phones and stuff mm-hmm. like that. The worst, the worst and worst on it goes. But that's pretty cool. So I, either way, March 3rd, you're going to get a break somehow. It'll, it'll <laughs> be over. You know, <laughs> we're March <done>. 3rd. <laughs> um, we're kind of closing in on an hour. What do you have coming up? Any events? Anything you want to tell us about? Sure. Or why not? Um, so they just announced that there's going to be another candidate forum. It's Wednesday, February 12th. So it's next week from now. Okay. Um, but Wednesday, February 12th, up at Midland College. Um, and this time they're actually taking questions from the public. The last one was, it had moderators and the questions were presented by the moderators and there'll still be a moderator, right. but they're actually taking questions from the audience for each candidate. Um, so that is the evening. I want to say it starts at six or six thirty, um, but it's Wednesday, February 12th. And then I personally have a big fundraiser coming up on February 18th. Um, you can find all the information on my website. Anybody can come who wants to come. We're going to go out to Tall City Brewery and we're going to eat home homemade etouffee by uh cara Lachelet's dad oh wow uh-huh I've so had, yeah they oh yeah oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so some beer some crawfish some good times fantastic right uh awesome. where can people find you online if they would like to help your campaign in any way or support you so I have a website. It's RebeccaForCountyAttorney.com. It's got all the information you could possibly want on there. It's got all the upcoming events like the fundraiser. It's got the link to donate. It's got um, information for how to vote in the primary. So it's really just a plethora of information. Well, we will put that in the description. You're also on Facebook. Also on Facebook. It's Rebecca Patterson Linehan for County Attorney. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. We will put all that in there again except for the Facebook. Just Facebook and YouTube don't like each other. Yeah. Don't like each other. Yeah. So if you're on Facebook and uh, you want to find out, easy to just find. Put that in the search. Go bar. like my page. But it's the yep. internet. It's easy to find anything. It's also, true. yeah. If you if you want to support Rebecca, also share this video mm-hmm. uh, far and wide. You can share it uh, on on Facebook. Uh, it is. This will not come up in your news feed likely because again these two formats don't like each other and they're typically too long to upload as a Facebook video. Right. So we kind of have that, but uh, that's where you can find them. You can find us. We're Van Cave, vancave.com. We're also on just about any podcast format or we're supposed to be. I'm paying for it. And uh, <laughs> we know Buzzsprout for sure. Buzzsprout, yeah, but we they're supposed to spread it out. Also, give us a like and a share. Thank you very much. Did we catch everything, all your stuff. <laughs> stuff You're still doing so. signs and all that still and doing signs and all that if you want to sign let me know we cool. deliver i've got worker elves so fantastic mm-hmm. yep right on yeah. i think we got it and uh before we out talk our batteries everything's still running cool. yes let's not press our luck yeah so give us a like and share uh a, a like and subscribe to us if you're not already a viewer and we talk about all kinds of crazy stuff and occasionally we have some class on the show like we were talking about <laughs> bigfoot yeah. The other day. No we, were, we, were we were drinking whiskey uh, and we talking were drinking about expensive scotch talking about yeah. the latest Bigfoot sighting. So <laughs> thank you for classing the joint up. You're welcome. We enjoyed the visit. It's very good to hang out with you again. I miss yeah, you guys. It's great to see you. And um yeah, you gotta visit Lacey too. So Yes. Yeah. I gotta go next door and go don't, see don't, my don't tell surrogate her about family. The, don't tell her about the dog poop. I'll go clean her. <laughs> I won't. So. I won't tell her. Anyway, cheers guys. Thank cheers. you very much. We enjoyed it. Thanks everybody for watching. Clink. Yeah. Your water. Uh-huh. Appreciate it. Enjoy. Cheers.